Okay. Welcome to the May 17th, 2021 meeting of the Montpelier Design Review Committee. I will let staff and members introduce themselves by speaking their names. Martha Smirsky, member. Eric Gilbertson, member. Liz Pritchett, member. Steve Everett, member. Ben still there? He's showing is there, but I'm not hearing him. Ben, you're muted. Benjamin Cheney, member. Okay. Meredith, Meredith Crandall, staff. Tammy Burry, recording secretary. Okay, welcome everyone. And Meredith, would you like to explain the remote meeting procedures? Yes, I have to admit, this is one thing I'm gonna be glad when I don't have to do all the time. All right, so I'm sharing the screen. This is mostly for people who are new to the way we do this um, and for those watching from home. All right, so for anybody watching from home on Orca Media, you can participate by using the Zoom link here or calling in to this phone number and using the meeting ID. Um, Zoom link, of course, you'll be able to see all the video um, but either way, you can participate in the meeting if you decide that there's an application or discussion going on that you want to take part in. If anyone is having problems getting into the meeting, you can email me at this email address down here at the bottom. Now, for those who are already in the meeting, um, if you're having problems, please use the chat function in Zoom um, for any technical difficulties. Um, and I will, that's the best way to deal with that, if at all possible. The Zoom meeting is being recorded as well as streamed live via Orca Media. Turning on your video is optional. All public testimony will be taken verbally. Um, and if the chat function is used, it'll be added to the public record. Please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. This reduces background noise. For those participating by phone, you can use star six to mute yourself or unmute yourself. And that way those of us here on Zoom can actually see what's going on. Um, if you're interested in, in speaking on a particular matter, that isn't the matter that we know you're on here for tonight, like applicants, we know you're on for your matter, but you can also talk on other things. Um, and if you wanna speak on those matters, please raise your hand either physically or by using the raise hand button on your toolbar. If you're on the phone, you can press star nine and that will raise a little image of, of a hand so that we'll know you wanna speak. Um, if none of those options seem to be working for you, please feel free to state your name in a pause. Once the chair has recognized you to participate, Pete, then please unmute your microphone, confirm that you can be heard. Um, and if you aren't an applicant for that item, provide your full name and address for the record. Um, and we ask that any public comments be limited to two minutes. Um, yeah, there'll be some, if there are public comments, there'll be some back and forth and discussion. Um, and then the chair might move on to somebody else. In the event that I get emails that the public is unable to access this meeting, it will be continued to a time and place certain. If you're having connectivity issues, try turning off your video or closing other applications on your phone or computer. Um, if anyone is having problems seeing this, the share screen, or if anybody from home wants to follow along, you can download our all the meeting attachments on this page. Um, note that all votes taken during this meeting that are not unanimous will be done by a roll call vote. I'll now hand the meeting back over to the chair. Okay, unless anybody has anything to add at this point. Do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? So moved, Eric. This is Martha, I second it. All in favor of the agenda, speak your names. Martha. Lance. Eric. And Steve. 
So we can move forward with the first application for 147 Main Street. This is an application for a sign at the Inn in Montpelier and the social restaurant. Is there a, the applicant here to explain their application? Uh, yes, this is Michael Drake. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Hello. So I haven't participated in one of these before with the city. So you just let me know what specifics you'd like me to detail or just provide a brief overview. You could just give us a, a thumbnail summary of your sign. We, we can see the picture of it. Just give us an idea of the materials and the details. Of course. So as context, uh, the inn going back 20 years had a full service restaurant on site. And one of the pictures I provided to Audra was a fine dining sign that hung underneath the inn of Montpelier sign through that time, which would have been approved um, and had since been removed uh, over the last uh, 20 years while there wasn't a public dining option available at the end. Uh, you know, we would like to maintain the social sign, which is a similar size to that old public dining sign below the inn sign. It is a polyacrylic board with the social uh, logo and emblem uh, affixed onto it. It is uh, white plastic, the dimensions you all have um, right there. One thing I already discussed with Audra was adjusting the lights, which uh, are raised at an angle that might be a bit blinding. So we're going to rotate those lines and those lights to point in uh, more toward the building versus the street. Um, that's probably all I should say at this point. Please let me know if you want me to share the application materials at any point. Audra, is there any way to see the lettering below the social? It's sort of faded out in our representation. Yeah, I don't have another copy. Um, Michael, do you have something else? I'm trying to... Or just just let us know what the what it says we can't even read it It says yes of course it says the social and it says food ampersand drink montpelier vermont If anybody goes to the socials website, which is the socialvt.com, uh, it is that exact social logo and emblem just affixed on a printed material. Okay, thank you. Michael, what is the material used for the In at Montpelier sign? It is wood. Was there a reason that an acrylic was chosen for this edition? Uh, it's a lighter weight material. Uh, we didn't have to modify the posts or rest of the sign anyway. Um, it seemed complementary with the color scheme. So that's it. No other purpose. Had you thought about continuing with wood? Uh, we had, we decided to go with the polyacrylic. Because of the weight? Yes, ma'am. That's certainly one of the considerations. Is that, is that a polyacrylic special material for signs? Yes, it's a hard plastic used uh, across the industry for signs. Who's, who's making the sign? Uh, we had a uh, boutique online sign maker make it. So it's a special material made specifically for signs. Correct. Probably similar to the sign foam that's been used on a number of signs that make it more weather resistant. 
as well. Yeah. Yes, sir. We expect a long life out of it. I'm wondering two questions, one of which is, do you intend to do anything to the top of those posts or are they going to be left just kind of, they look unfinished at the moment to me? Are they going to get carried? Um those are the signs we have not touched those signs in any way those are the signs that have been there for uh, my understanding probably 1988 or prior um i'm open to suggestions on there uh but that's not something we had planned to do and i imagine that would require additional approval by this committee to do so the the earlier picture of the sign shows a more detailed cap on top of the post is that are they gone or is that still there uh those have not been anywhere on the property since we took it over i think we could approve uh the opportunity to put caps back on there at this meeting uh to me it just feels pretty unfinished the way it is right now and i guess my other question is and maybe you said this and I missed it and I apologize. Are you running two separate businesses, meaning the, the social and the in Montpelier? Or is it one business? It, uh, so it's technically or, one corporate entity. Uh, we just decided because the social has a larger restaurant with its own uh, particular type of food style and cuisine and you know people going they're just for the dining separate from staying at the end that we were best served by having two names. So everything's registered with the state with uh, all the appropriate bodies that there are two DBAs doing business as uh, under, you know, as part of the corporate entity, which is Endeavors Incorporated. But it is one technically one corporate business that, you know, maintains both of the uh, doing business as names. As far as the posts go, we could give as a, we could give a recommendation that the top of those posts be capped. In Certainly a happy to comply on that. In a, in a style similar to what was on the, there was a picture of the previous sign and it shows caps on both of those posts. And if those posts are standard size, either four by four, six by six, looks like it, it's at least a six by six. Uh, you can you can get caps that merely attach to the top of the post and any number of details. Sounds great. We will hunt those down and apply the Montpelier uh, and green color scheme to them. And yeah, no problem. We will match the old photos. Okay. Great. I think it'll make it look very nice. Agreed. I mean, that, that whole building is such a classy building. It's just, it's beautiful that it's being, it's retaining all of its character. I have Yes, we do love it. I'm super excited that you purchased it and seeing people out on the porch is really fantastic. It's been really just incredible to drive by. Um, in the past, prior to your owning it, I feel like whoever had the light bulbs in it, they were really like jarring uh, the way on the porch and just inside the door. I don't know if that, and that's more of a winter thing than it is now, but um, it was something every time I drove by, I was like, ah, Maybe there's a different uh, kind of shade of light bulb that could be inside inside those fixtures that didn't feel as as jarring. Yeah, we've been switching to you know there have been some bulbs that went out like on the back side of the porch and we're switch we've switched to warmer lighting. You're right, it's a difference between industrial style lighting that's kind of colder and harsher and a kind of more natural light. Yep. That's great. Thank you. I, that's been on my mind as like something that. Every time I drive by it, I've been like, ah, it could be so awesome. It could be so awesome. So super excited for the work you're doing there. Thank you. 
Thank you. I agree. It's wonderful to have that building used again. I'm looking forward to having a meal there. So another supporter. Wonderful. Please, please do. We are uh, thrilled with the support of the community so far. So we're, we're happy to have the in breathing life again, the community and being able to be used by so many people. So that, that was the goal. <laughs> Do any committee members have any other comments, questions, or suggestions? No, Eric don't. Um, okay. Steve, hold on one second, because we had somebody come in partway through. I just want to make sure I know what who they're on for. Uh, Mr. Higgins, can you let me know what application you're on to hear about tonight? You'll need to unmute yourself. Yes, uh, the man Lewis. Oh, okay. So that's that is the this this hearing right now is the design review committee. Uh, Mr. Lewis's continued application doesn't start until seven o'clock, and that's oh. the development review board. Okay, I'll uh, I'll come back in then. Okay, I'll see you then. Bye. Bye. Thank hey, you. If nobody else has anything to add at this point. We can go through the criteria for signs in the design control overlay district. Criteria number one, the size, location, design, color, texture, lighting, and material of all exterior signs within the design review overlay district shall be compatible with the building and structure of the site and surrounding properties, that's acceptable. Where appropriate, signing shall respect the original sign placement and sign bands on historic structures. This ground sign has been there before and it is appropriate at this location. If a building has multiple tenants, in this case, it does not apply, even though they're two separate names, but it's the same business. So I'll just call that, actually, I'll just call it acceptable. Sign design, color, and typography shall respect historic precedents where appropriate and shall be the appropriate scale for existing and new buildings. Again, this sign is replicating the sign that was there before and is acceptable. And again, the recommendation is that the tops of the two signposts will be capped to duplicate the detail on the previous signpost. And do I hear, if all in favor of the application, speak your names? Eric. Martha. And Steve. So the application is passed. And Meredith, do you want to describe the next step? Uh, yes. So, um, Michael, we'll um, get the form that Eric just, or sorry, Steve just ran through, signed off on. Um, there is an optional change in there. So what we'll do is we'll send you a copy of that for you to sign off on, um, that you agree with that option. And then okay. um, because I'm trying to remember, you're not changing any lights. So I don't think we had to do any um, administrative site plan for this. So then once we get that back from you, we should be issuing that permit in the day or two, depending on how we're, who, who's here to actually issue it. Perfect, okay. and I should expect that via email? Yes, yeah, we'll do it via okay. email, it's a lot faster. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, I do apologize for seemingly having put the uh, cart before the horse here. I thought I was uh, going through all the right processes, but it seems like we missed one or two with COVID and <laughs> everything. So thank you for the consideration. And I do hope to meet all of you over the coming months now that uh, with uh, everyone's diligence that COVID seems to be on the downtrend of Vermont. So. Thank you, Michael. 
Good yes, luck. Sir. Thank you very much. Good luck with your project and with the uh, success of your business. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we can go next. I guess there's a for informal review of 101 Northfield Street. It's a pre-application proposal. Is someone here to describe the application for Northfield Street? Yes, Paul O'Leary from O'Leary Brook Civil Associates is here, along with Joel Page from Scott and Partners, who will likely do most of the talking, and the owner, uh, Rick Bove, is online with us today. Okay, go ahead and describe your project. So I'll start. So, so we're looking at the former Brown Derby parcel next to the Econo Lodge. I'm sure um, most folks are well familiar with the property. And Mr. Bo has an option uh, to buy the Brown Derby parcel. And we are just starting the permit process. And we would like to share our concepts to see what you have for comments. Uh, what we are proposing and what we sent to you is a 42 unit market rate housing building uh, appears to be four stories from the roadway uh, three stories from the back um, surface parking at, at a ratio of about 1.4 to 1 and a number of different amenities uh, within the building and i will kick it over to joel page who can describe the building and the architectural design and its features in much better detail than i can Thanks, Paul. Good evening, good evening, everybody. Liz, good to see you. I haven't seen you in a long time. Nice um, to see you, Joel. Hope, <laughs> hope all everyone is doing well. Um, I don't know what you've seen to date um, for drawings. Have you seen anything? Shared it amongst anybody? Because um, I can pull up our the screen to sort of walk through the project if that's I, desirable. That would be very helpful. Um, I was not able to print out any of your schemes. So it would really be helpful to me. Sure, I'll bring that up. Yeah, Joel, I shared what you shared with the um, neighborhood meeting. Mm -hmm. So they have had it, but you know, like Martha said, sometimes they aren't able to, to print them out and it's good to be able to look at things. Sure. Closer. And walk everybody right through it. Let me get my screen. Uh, so yeah, the big picture um, can orient you on this site. Uh, sort of schematic site plan. Everything right now is very schematic, but the general concept of what we're trying to do is in these drawings. Um, here's Northfield Street. So Montpelier is down this way. This is the wing of the existing Econo Lodge. Um, and this is the Brown Derby site. This is the road you want to take to get up to National Life and uh, continue this way down to Northfield. Um, as Paul mentioned, it's 42 unit building. Um, three stories at the at this elevation four stories at the lower elevation it's a sloping contoured site um, starts kind of up here where there's a berm of cedar trees and works its way downhill to the street <clears throat> so we're taking advantage of the grade to fit the basement first floor so to speak into uh into the into the landscape a mix of two bedroom and one bedroom apartments with a couple of efficiencies mixed in um the intent the big picture intent of the building is to try to maximize the site for some green spaces that can be used by the residents um also um to sort of keep the building back away from the road and have some planting so the size of the building is a little bit less obvious uh when you're driving up the road um we will try our best to maximize solar gain on the roof so we can put solar panels there. Also, um, heating and cooling will be pretty much what doing what is or the more contemporary well-insulated buildings are doing now, which is using ductless mini-split heat pumps for heating and cooling with a uh, backup electrical baseboard heat uh, for supplemental heating and a full ERV fresh air makeup air system. Um, kind of going into the floor plans just generally. 
Um, <clears throat> this would be the second, we'll start down at the lowest level, um, which is what you would see uh, sort of at the same streetscape height. Um, the back end of the building has various amenities, laundry, lots of tenant storage, mechanical rooms, um, elevator machine room, elevator in the building allows full access to the building by everybody, um, a dog wash and a little fitness center. Uh, the the uh, up at the second story, the parking is out at this end, fully ADA entrance, you know, the usual amenities at the big entry into a building, mailboxes, notice center, and then vertical access to the floors above. There are various uh, community spaces within the building that can be used by the tenants uh, on each floor. And the idea is to try to break the building up. We have some nice daylight that will come through this area here, sort of a shaft. Um, also daylight at the end of the corridors, which sort of draws you in as you go. Uh, the building will be fully sprinkled. Um, our energy efficiency goals are to achieve the maximum we can, given our budget, trying to meet the efficiency Vermont high performance goals. Um, and then each floor sort of mirrors itself on the way up. Um, again, these central corridor amenity spaces and, and daylight corridors uh, happen throughout the building on each floor. View-wise, um, these are sort of perspectives. Uh, this would be coming from Northfield down the hill. You can see the Econolodge in the background, trying to um, reduce the height of the building by having a more uh, flat roof, so to speak. Also, uh, a bit of a parapet to hide any of the amenities on the roof as best we can. And the nice thing about flat roofs is we can manage stormwater on the site, which makes Paul happy. Um, and another view coming from Montpelier playing with different sidings. We're looking at trying to use durable sidings that will reduce the amount of maintenance that uh, Rick has to do over the life of the building, trying to break up the scale a bit as we can with materials and with the undulation of the, of the outside form of the building. Uh, again, some more perspectives, kind of getting a feel for, this is the backside parking lot side of the building. And then a bigger picture here of sort of the site as a whole coming up North Street, Northfield here, Montpelier here, the lovely Econo Lodge uh, church, and then some of the neighboring houses with a tree separation, trying to reduce some of the, uh, the through adjacencies between the spaces. The interesting thing is because of the sloping of the land, these folks basically look in at the top level of the building and not down below. So um, scale wise, we're hoping it will blend in relatively well considering its size. Uh, and then just general elevations of the building. So that's sort of the big picture. And you can get an idea from here. You know, this is the undulation of the site across section through it. Um, street side, parking lot side. Um, so we've had a lot of fun. Montpelier does need housing. And uh, this is a great uh, opportunity to provide some for the city. Would love to answer any questions. You've mentioned a couple any? of times, Joel, that the parking is all street level. Uh, it's all, um, it's behind right up in here. Okay. So yeah, it's, uh, go back to this. So it's, here's the street, which is probably, ooh, I don't know, 20 feet below parking up here. Oh, so okay. I, I don't know if you're familiar, but with the street, you know, right now there's an existing curb cut here that used to be part of the Brown Derby. There's a parking lot above it. Yes. I, I used to live at the condos, First Grieves Association over here, so I'm pretty familiar with the area. Um, so that still exists. We're going to be enlarging it or improving it, and, and that will contain uh, stormwater management and other uh, amenities that we need to make it work on the site. Okay. Thank you. Meredith, are, this is a gateway. Are there any special pieces of... Uh... Uh, the regs we need to deal with to deal with gateways? No, this this one, um, I mean, there's nothing special for this zoning district. The zoning district is mixed use residential. Um, it's not one of the um, 
zoning districts with its own design or architectural standards. Um, and I don't think we have anything, we don't have anything for that in the design review regs either. Um, because even though it's a, even though it is that Northfield Street is a gateway, I don't think our regs have anything for this particular drive-in. Double check. No, it would be a gateway drug. <laughs> <laughs> I just have a couple of quick questions. Number one, is there any provision for outside space, either from within the units using a French balcony or some similar, something similar? Or is there any outside, are there any outside decks, patios to allow people to be outside? In, in the fresh air? Uh, we explored different options of that kind of approach, um, uh, but they are, it's challenging to implement on a building of this size. So uh, generally our approach is, is we will provide outside amenities around the building uh, and there's easy access so you can walk to the park that's behind National Life. Um, and I know that, you know, back up this way, there's some nice walking loops as well. So that's kind of the approach that we've taken. It's very nice to be able to have some exposure to the outside, either certainly during the warmer months and then occasionally even in the colder months when there's a, a pleasant day and you get a, a, a warmer day with a lot of sun. It's very nice to be able to go easily outside and not have to wade through snow maybe. <laughs> Uh, one thing I've done in other projects is it wasn't so much of an outside thing, but we had a French door and you could open it, but you have a barrier, like a guardrail. Yes. At that door, so you can get that feel from outside. The challenge too, you know, with decks and anything like that um, is one is a long-term maintenance that we, we always want to be cognizant of. And two, you know, if you're on the top deck, you're doing pretty good, but if you're down below and we don't have do a good job water, proofing and managing that, you get the wet ick from everybody above you. So it's a something we have to keep in mind. I uh, didn't agree with saying if you want to make the building attractive for market rate, which is keeps climbing, yeah. if you want to make it attractive for market rate, uh, I, I wouldn't look at anything myself that didn't have something on the outside, either a deck or a French balcony or something so I could open up to the outside on a nice day. No, I can't disagree. It's good, good points. I also completely agree with Steve. I also wonder a little bit about whether there was some sort of, whether the, the way the windows worked, whether they were um, sort of sliders that uh, uh, accordion opened to create a bigger sort of opening, at least in. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, right now we're, because we have, cooling in the building because we will have it um these are we're looking at uh, awning type windows um we could look at the i would typically the danger with sliders is long-term performance um from past experience um, and then casements the danger with casements is, is they don't hold up over time so trying to find the right balance of window window type and durability is is is, is a challenge sure I also was thinking more the accordion kind of bifold window, and I do think that there have been some significant um, leaps forward in window world in recent years. I, I like the Euro tilt turn time. It's, it's interesting that in France and Italy, they managed to do French balconies, and they still have the original doors that are 200 years old. It was good wood back then. <laughs> yeah. No, your points are well taken. The one thing I, th one thing I think we need to discuss, and this building is uh, considerably larger than anything else in the neighborhood, other than the National Life Building, uh, which is not really in the neighborhood with this. 
uh, it, it's it's a big building in a, a neighborhood of single family houses. Uh, could you talk about your thinking? I'm not sure how I feel about it as a gateway that way, but uh, could you uh, kind of discuss your thinking? Sure. Uh, um, well, the scale of the building, we have to meet the market requirements for buildability. So that, that it causes the number of apartments. Uh, the other part of it though, we were, we scale was significant in our thinking, um, but, um, and one nice aspect of this location is, is that pretty much everybody, there's no houses that are in direct view here on this side of the road. The first one is Steve's house that's over here. Um, so the, you are, we're not directly impacting the, the immediate neighbors uh, on this side. And because of the scale of the terrain here, we're hoping that we will have minimal impact on the neighbors on this side. The church folks actually were quite supportive of this idea. They stopped by our public gathering the other day. Um, they were more concerned about traffic. And when we explained that we have this existing curb cut here, and then eventually if, if this project continues, we may eventually have another look at another curb cut down here, which will then become the main uh, access to the site, reducing traffic up in this area. Um, so yes, scale is important. Um, it's hard to take a four-story building and make it too small. So we tried to break up the feel of it with the um, with trying to use different materials and uh, different proportions. Uh, the challenge will be in Montpelier if we want to have affordable housing or market rate housing or more apartments, they will be of a scale like this because in general, most apartment buildings seem to be in the 25 to 40 range uh, to make it affordable for folks to build depending on where they're building in a lot size. You're, you you mentioned uh, a Connell Lodge. Is that uh, part of your plans in the future to do something similar there? If if everything worked out, and and I'd rather would have Rick speak on this, but if if everything worked out in the future, that would be an an option that we would be interested in. Yes. One thing you can do to minimize the visual impact of a building that size is very careful selection of color schemes. Yes. Look, looking at your original drawings, that would definitely tone down the orange. Oh, come on. No, I agree. I mean, yes, these are first preliminary. One of the, one, one of the recommendations in the cityscape plans that have been around Montpelier for the last 40 years and highly recommending using earth tone colors, basically softening the colors depending on the scale of the project. Can't complain with that. No, good idea. So again, color color is part of the design and it's an important part of the criteria. I think uh, you may have said, but I didn't fully get it, what the materiality of the, uh, the siding is. Is it a cement board or is it some sort mm -hmm. of other composite? Yeah, it would be something durable. Um, we probably were, we could head in the, the direction of cement board. The lower tier, this area along here, we're looking at some sort of masonry, sort of to help ground the building and to provide a durable sort of base to it. Um, I, I play a lot often with metal siding, which can sound a little industrial, but if it's done right, I think it can be interesting and, and, and have a nice feel to it. 
Um, but right now we haven't fully nailed down the direction of the siding, but it'll it probably for costs will end up being some sort of fiber cement product, panels and lap siding and other options. And when you say metal, you're you're talking more like the kind of ribbed metal roofing, or you uh, have yeah, but yes, but they make specific siding as opposed to roofing. Similar, you know, kind of texture or kind of product idea. Sure, I was just looking to get in the right family. Yeah, yeah. Could you chat a little bit about the plantings and um, how big they're going to get? I have no idea. So uh, the idea would be probably at some point we'll have a landscape architect come on. Uh, so plantings, you know, typically will start out as a one or two inch caliber scale because it's what is affordable. And then they will be selected to grow to a certain height. Um, and I think, you know, depending on what the intent of the ultimate landscaping will be, uh, it'll be I, I really don't know other than that, you know, uh, depending, it'll depend on the tree species and the plant selection. So ideally we want to have trees that will grow to a, you know, 30 feet high or 25 to 35 feet high uh, in significant locations so that they become view blocks as well as shading devices and then uh, institute or bring in, uh, you know, uh, landscaping of different sizes of bushes and trees to help fill the, the bigger gaps in and to create some visual interest. Um, the uh, total height of the building, total height on, of the building the, on the is, five story side. 45 feet, I think, is our maximum height. Yeah. I would hope that the uh, landscaping would be designed to screen so to make the building appear smaller. Yes. Yeah. And you would, I think you'll find over time, uh, let me go back to that, that the building will, you know, We'll get the landscaping to grow. The building will start to blend in, and it will become a building that you get used to, like much like the other buildings that you go by every day. Um, I share Eric's concern about the size. Um, I grew up in that neighborhood, and it just seems mammoth in compared to what else is around there. Um, I understand, however, that we need housing in Montpelier. Um, you said that there was a sort of a cost point in building something like this, that it's not cost effective to do anything under 25 to 40 units. Had there been any thought of doing something more around 25 or 30 units? Um, I will let Rick jump in on that one if he is available. Rick, you'll need to unmute, I think, if you want to speak on that one. It shows that he's oh, here. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, so I don't have those, the, those, the numbers that we could go down to. You okay. know, this this is the sweet spot. Um, we did look at just sort of to run back to the building itself, looking at taking the building and creating multiple buildings on the site. Mm -hmm. um, but it's site's not it's big, but it's not that big. You know, so it's challenging to uh, you know we could create two buildings. I don't know if we're going to gain anything that way. And then economy of building is easier when it's one building than multiple buildings. So it, it becomes a cost benefit game to play. One comment I do have is it seems difficult to approach as a pedestrian. <clears throat> if I'm walking from Montpelier and I want to get into that building, I realize the sidewalk is on the other side of the street. I would imagine there would be some considerations made to move a, a the crosswalk, but it feels as though way, the way it's landscaped and I can't quite see the entrance on the lower side, but to have to walk all the way past the building uphill and turn around, 
versus having that path that you were just on mm -hmm. somehow connecting a little closer to the road and just sort of sure that could easily happen this is the entrance yeah. at the lower level yeah is there yeah. is there an image of that that you could show sure right here yeah. So right now, uh, uh, we were we had a call earlier today, the technical review folks, and um, the discussion of I think there is potentially a plan for a sidewalk on that side of the road at some point. Uh, so that's in our discussions. I don't know where it will head. Yeah, I, even just yeah. gesturally making it feel more human scale and more pedestrian friendly and more sort of like neighborhoody that there is like, it's not just something you drive by. And I like that all the parking is behind it. And so it feels like a real, should be a real opportunity to be a gesture to the street, to the pedestrian, some sort of welcoming sort of architectural feature pathway entrance awning type pergola thing. I don't know, but. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, a strong human scaled gesture, I think would be really nice on the mm -hmm. street side, not just like a door. Sure. Well, there could be a, so we have some seating here, which is kind of hard to see in that drawing, but um, could be something more than that, you know, and, and more of a direct access. If we wanted to have that to the sidewalk if it ever happened. Sure. I think having, having some sheltered seating would be nice. I assume the bus is going to run by there since, yes. it, since it goes up to National Life. We would we would encourage that. Hopefully we can uh, create a bus stop. We'll have bicycle parking as well and bicycle storage in the building, uh, which would be nice. Um, I've been working with another company and um, they provide electric bikes for their employees to use, which is kind of fun. So what is the, um, the, the, the walkway leading to the lower right, um, the brown, what is that there? Uh, it's notional, it's a community garden or some sort of garden oh, area. Oh, that's nice. Trying to bring, you know, we've, we're this very conceptual, uh, but trying to create some wildlife sort of butterfly garden, flower gardens, yeah. community, you know, so tenants have a, have a place to go. They can have a garden space, uh, but also, you know, it has a visual interest for folks going by on the road. Thanks. Yeah. And you have some benches around, I see scattered around, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. One, one thought was to try to have a, like a little meditative walkway path. I don't know how practical that is, uh, but. There's some seating here, which could be a view into the garden. It could also be a view out across the roadway. And I don't think we can see into town from here, but. No. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. What What is the exact direction that the front of this building faces? It faces sort of east. So it's parallel okay. basically with Northfield Street, which pretty much okay. runs north south. I'm still concerned about the size of the building in this neighborhood. And uh the precedent it might set for other projects. In this particular location, I don't have a huge problem with it, but uh, it, part of uh, you know our design review standards talk about compatibility with the neighborhood. And uh, it's pretty hard to see how this fits in the neighborhood. I also realize that that, you know, cuts out any kind of a, a apartment building uh, or at, at, on the site so right you hit your head on the nail i mean it's part of a bigger discussion you know to bring housing into 
cities or areas, especially, you know, more smaller scale villages or towns like Montpelier, um, it's a challenge. You know, three or four story buildings of any size, there's limited lot locations for them. Um, we there are of a scale that will be a bit different than what is typical unless you're sort of building up around by the college. Um, so it, it, it's a challenge. If, if this was an historic neighborhood, I would have a real problem with it. <laughs> yeah, they wouldn't look like this if it was a historic neighborhood. Yes, totally agree. Eric, I'm not certain how we define neighborhood because if I was to think about all the condominiums that are not too far from this thing, that doesn't feel radically different to me. And I appreciate this as a as a building a little bit more than these kind of long rows of condos that are not very far from here. Right, First Greaves Condo Association and those up on that area, hillside. Um, can I? maybe help a little bit and just read what we have in the regs for um, scale and massing for projects that don't involve historic buildings for new development. Would that be helpful? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes, please. Okay. <coughs> so what we've got um, is the scale and massing of new buildings shall be compatible with surrounding structures. And then there's a sub point compatible scale and massing can be achieved by incorporating a variety of shapes or materials such as columns, windows and their placement, doorways, roof segments and wall patterns. Um, so it doesn't necessarily say that it has to be the same size as the uh, nearby buildings, right? The surrounding structures. And that's, that's what we have for scale and massing for new development. So we'll do, we can do a deep dive into it, I think, um, because this will be the first time we've reviewed a brand new structure under these new design review regs. Um, and so these these will all be in the DRC recommendation forms and we'll make sure to circulate that ahead of um, any official review of an application. Okay, thank you, Meredith. You're welcome. Any other comments, questions, suggestions from the committee members? I'm excited to see this lot have something really happen on it. So I appreciate the effort that you put towards this. And I think um, I understand the complexities of building buildings and the efficiencies gained by sort of grouping it all together. And I think you've made a nice effort towards creating something that would work. And I have high hopes for something that is well built with beautiful materials that lasts a long time with real strong efforts towards making it pedestrian friendly and and uh, like those outdoor spaces feel not just token but actually usable and used. Uh, and I also take um, Steve's point that if I was to rent anything in a market rate place, I would want my own personal access to the outside. Thank you. Appreciate that. I re re reiterate that as well. I think it's much more attractive if there is available outside space, whether it's a deck or a French balcony or something that allows you to feel like you, you can <laughs> be more directly connected to the outside environment without having to go to a community deck or patio or, I mean, if you get 42 units in there and you get anywhere between 60 and 100 people in there, if everybody wants to be outside at the same time, it gets can be a little crowded. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the other thing, again, to minimize impact, I think color choices are very important for building this size. Sure, uh, no, I agree. 
that that makes a huge difference if you look at some of the better projects that have built in been built in Burlington, uh, Stowe, and other places. Color and material choices have been huge as far as how, how successful a building has been. Let me. Um, I just pulled up a, an option we worked on. Rick will probably shoot me for bringing it up. Um, but I th just from a, we uh, were concerned about scale on the area on this side toward the church. And one thought we had was we could take an apartment off one end and put a roof terrace that could be shared by folks on it. Um, it would reduce the scale on the streets, this end of the building. Um, but that was a, a different approach we were looking at as, a, as an idea. I don't know if that would solve everybody's vision of outside space at an apartment, but it would be a nice amenity. I would strongly encourage that. I think that that's a really nice feature. I think that we don't use roofs enough. And I think that as a tenant in that building, I would be inclined to spend time up there. I think it does bring the scale down as much as I can see in your current rendering, but I can imagine it doing that. And I think that it would breathe some life to the exterior of the building that um, I think would be, a, I, that would be a very welcome addition from my standpoint. I, I think the paint colors that you choose uh, and the materials for the siding and things that has a lot, that will have a lot to do with uh, its improvement impression as a large building and uh so anything you can do to reduce that appearance of a large building uh, would be very helpful that's why i mentioned the landscaping and uh, uh colors uh really make a difference i think those subdued earth strong colors uh that don't jump out at you uh would be much better yeah, sure. The earth, earth tone colors make it blend in with its natural environment much better. Yeah, how about a little pop of color once in a while here or there? That's okay with me. I'm not going to fight you. On. Either as a trim or an accent, possibly, but maybe not large panels of it on mm -hmm. siding or the entry, you know, like the entry doors, perhaps. Right. Yeah, yeah. Or, or umbrellas on the rooftop terrace. <laughs> With the martini bar. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Does the applicant have any other questions or anything they'd like to add at this point? Uh, no, I appreciate the feedback. It's very helpful. This is the first time we've sort of brought this out of the closet. So it's great to hear what people have to say and um, we will take it into account in, in our next iterations of this. We appreciate your coming before us preliminarily to take a look at some of the feedback and some, and again, what we, the, the feedback we're trying to give is based on criteria that set up for us to evaluate a project in the district. Um, I have somebody logged in on a Samsung, a Samsung SMG9500U. Could whoever that is let me know who it is? Is somebody signed in on two different uh, computers right now? Is it the Zoom ghost? I uh, yeah. <laughs> They're not muted. Two so. phones. <clears throat> okay. Then we can move forward. So anyway, good good luck in, in your design work. And we look forward to seeing 
more 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 in your proposal and it's it's nice to see something that'll replace the old brown derby <laughs> which was there <laughs> and had its own special character <laughs> it certainly did <laughs> Thanks again, and look forward to seeing you both again sometime soon. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate the feedback. Have a, have a good night. Okay, sure. thank you very much. Rick, I don't know if you remember me. This is Eric uh, Gilbertson, but hi. No one has anything else at this point. We can move forward. Has everyone had a chance to look at the minutes? And do I hear any suggestions or changes? This is Martha, and I have no changes. Um, uh, looks good to me. If there are no suggested changes, do I hear a motion to approve the minutes? I'll move to approve the minutes. I will second. All in favor of the minutes, approving the minutes, speak your names. Martha. Aye. Ben. Steve. So the minutes are approved. Does anyone have any other business? Um, so just a note about summer schedule, unless somebody has something else to add. Okay. Um, so, uh, this is especially for the DRC members because the, their annual calendar went out in January, but it said that our first July meeting would be Monday, July 5th. Turns out because July 4th is on a Sunday, city hall is closed on the July 5th. That is our required holiday. So the first July meeting will be Tuesday, July 6th. Um, and then we're actually gonna be canceling the first August meetings. That would be August 2nd, so that I can get a vacation in. Now, our agenda says the next meeting is July the 7th. No, nope, it says June 7th, June 7th. I'm, I'm sorry, not July. June 7th is our next meeting? Yes. Next okay. meeting, that's June is so, fine. Just July and August that I was so talking July, about. So July is the 6th? Yeah. July okay. is Tuesday, July 6th. Okay. I just want to give everybody a heads up early, and we'll, we'll follow up with an email so you have it in writing, too. Okay. Thanks, Meredith. Well, thank you. If anyone has nothing else to add at this point, do I hear a motion to adjourn? I'll move to adjourn. Second. All in favor of adjournments, speak your names. Martha. Eric. Yes. Steve. So meeting is adjourned. Thank you all and have a nice evening. Thank you. Thank you. Take care of everyone. Thank you. Bye. Have a good night.